So we've known about Nuka Sai for a while now, and here I am just getting around to discussing her. But the reality is that there's been an awful lot going on, even though it's an off-season. And without a full picture, there wasn't really any urgency, because I thought maybe we might get more yet to come. But hey, we are inching closer and closer to release. So today, for Flesh and Blood Friday, let's chat new Kasai, shall we? A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, my Flesh and Blood friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando and go again, a fabulous cast. Happy Flesh and Blood Friday. I hope your week has gone well and I hope you have an even better weekend. But that's right. Today I want to talk the new Kasai. That's right. It's It's been a long time coming. Someone actually asked me, they're like, hey, how come you're awful quiet on this? Do you know something we don't? No, I don't. The reality is we had spoilers going into, or I had my spoiler, I should say, going into Thanksgiving and there was, again, no shortage of stuff to talk about. I had the Brian Gottlieb interview and all of that. So anyway, here we are talking new Kasai. I was kind of hoping we'd maybe pick up some other hints to how she would maybe, I mean, I think we know how she works, but I was kind of hoping we'd pick up maybe some other hints to things that would help her make gold. Haven't seen it yet, but spoiler season's going to drop here. Well, in about a week, we're going to have celebration and we're going to know what everything looks like real quick. So let's talk Kasai tonight. And what I want to start with is kind of a, a walk back in the member berry machine. I want to talk about old Kasai, who's not playable anymore, right? She is LL'd. But what made her so awesome? Okay, what made her, in my opinion, what made her so awesome was the fact that she did the warrior thing while presenting on hits. Now, they were not detrimental on hits, but traditionally the warriors have had advantageous on hits, right? Now, Kasai did as well, but with the exception was her on hits forced blocks because if they didn't you could build to your ultimate and i i believe i know that's what appealed to me overall was one you you had the guaranteed two swings right that's fun fun play style but again it's the you present your opponent with bad decisions no matter what and that's a very cool way to play the game because generally you have to present those bad decisions with are you going to take this on hit well, when they're super detrimental on hits, you're not leaving them with a choice. And that's, you know, when you run up against a bad guardian and all that. So I think Kasai was a very well-balanced hero. And I think it really spoke to a lot of people. Because also, building up towards an ultimate by doing your pink, you know, like a pinprick, pinprick, pinprick. Building up to the ultimate and just unleashing, that's pretty cool as well, right? And that speaks to certain people. All right, so now, let's go ahead and move on to new Kasai. So the question is, then, the reason I wanted to go to old one right now let's port it over to new kasai okay so no no secret that it's it's a different hero right we expect it to be a different hero so if you've drawn a card this turn your sword attacks cost one less to activate and once per turn action banish two red and two yellow from your graveyard the next time a weapon you control hits create a gold token okay so that in of itself is pretty cool okay so in a vacuum let's just look at this card right let's look at the hero i should say Okay, if you draw a card, so if you basically, you know, the easiest ways to spend a gold on that or something like that, right? You get free swings all turn. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you spend two, but you get a card draw, and then you can swing free all turn. In general, that's going to be kind of two swings. I mean, you're going to have to pay in most case, you know, you got hit and run, I suppose, but in most cases, you're going to, or glint, but you're going to have to pay in most cases for like a blade runner or something like that, right? If, and again, I'm assuming that we're using Centauri Cell Sword, which is a reasonable assumption given the fact that they re legalized, legalize it, right? They re legalized Centauri in Blitz, which heavily implies, and, and it wasn't affected in CC anyway, but it heavily implies that Centauri Cell Sword is the way you're supposed to, or sorry, Centauri Saber, not Cell Sword, my apologies is the way you're supposed to play her. Okay, so we're going with that assumption. Now, when I said it's kind of free, the sword swing itself is free, but you're still going to have to give it go again, right? And that's why I mentioned the hit and runs, the glints. Hopefully, we're up to speed now, okay? So that's cool. Uh, you know, there is an interesting play there, potentially with, like, Twinning Blade and stuff like that, because it's free, so you can keep going, but again, you have to get the payout, so probably better to use just, like, hit and runs and second swings and slice and dices and stuff like that. It's, that's my thought there. So with that said, the internal framework of the deck is largely the same. 
But where things get very different, again, in, in my opinion, is when you get into the supporting cards, right? So, you know, the blood on your hands copper strategy is not portable over directly to this Kasai, right? I mean, I, I think that's a fair statement. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you can't create copper, but when you're not presenting the threat of on hits to produce copper, you're not really doing the same thing, right? So for the rest of this episode, I will be making the assumption that Blood Under Hands is not playable with Nukasai. Okay, that is that is my assumption. We're going to have to explore a different strategy altogether, which is completely fine. But she does still, well, if I can find it here in my list, she does still have an ultimate, which is Raise an Army. Okay, so Raise an Army is actually pretty cool. Raise an Army poops out Centauri Cell Sword, uh, Mercenary Allies, okay? But Raise an Army, you just very simply, you play it, you blow up X Gold, and you poop out X Centauri Cell Swords, who is a, a pretty legit ally in of itself, right? So it's a three attack, two health ally, that for one, go again, but it can only attack if you've attacked with a weapon. And again, to the point of the weapon swinging for free, this one does not swing for free, right? You still have to pay for this. So let's go ahead and break down kind of the, you know, what do you need to do to make this worth it? Honestly, probably only to like two gold it makes it worth it, right? Obviously the dream play is like, oh, I've got eight gold, rah, right? But, but reasonably, if you assume that you're going to attack with a weapon and give it go again, you're probably paying on average one to do that, and then you're going to follow it up with two Centauri Cell Swords, right? I mean, again, that's my thought. Now, sure, you can always partner it with, you know, a Blade Runner, and then you can hit and run on that and go into it, sure, right? But again, you have to burn a gold to get that for free. So you start seeing how it, it compounds really quickly. So I think reasonably, most of the time when you raise an army, it's probably going to be for two. I don't think it's worth playing it for one. I think you want to keep the gold on the table and threaten. Obviously, if you could do it for three, that's better. But I think it's reasonable to play raise an army for two. Because if you really look at these cell swords, you you want to do this on the turn and and because this in itself is a card probably in your arsenal right if we're being realistic you probably have raise an army in your arsenal waiting for the moment to strike but the cell swords themselves they're going to suck up two hits right so you need to assume that you are going and and by that i mean two two powered hits obviously right not two kadachis but you need to assume that you're probably, for the most part, only going to be able to use your cell swords on the turn they come into play. Now, obviously, if you come in for four cell swords, that's a different statement, right? But again, that might be a win more scenario at that point because it does seem that it's going to be very hard to produce the gold to do this. And also, you need to be able to pitch one to swing with these guys each time. Now, they have go again, so you can keep going, but you have to be able to feed them, right? Not only do you have to pay to get them on the table, you got to keep feeding them, okay? And, and, and that's fine, right? Nobody wants them to just come down and swing like Jeromai's minions, right? Because they're, they're pretty good. So I think that's fair. So then we run into the next part here, which is really exploring this new strategy, which is, to be blunt, making gold, right? I mean, that's her thing. So how do we do that overall? Well, we look heavily to the set, at least on the surface, we look at cards like money where your mouth is, right? Which is wagering. You have to be able to win that stuff. So once, and, and again, we, we have not seen the full set, right? No one's claiming we have. There certainly could be more options out there, but much of this wager stuff, you know, you have, again, you have money where your mouth is, which is any attacks. You can be on a weapon attack, right? Helps you threaten irons on response, right? It's the forcing blocks thing, which again, makes Kasai really cool. 100% on board with that. But a lot of this other wagering stuff looks to be attack-based, or at least, again, from what we've seen, which makes it very interesting to start trying and planning that dual string swing, dual swing strategy, excuse me, with, you just start running out of room, I think is my point. So I think that's going to be a real challenge in terms of getting, you know, obviously we have, you know, visions of sugar plum dancing fairies and, you know, 40 gold tokens in our head. But I think reasonably, you're looking at, like I said, two to three, just because of how hard it's going to be. You know, because if you look at money where your mouth is, that's a one for three front pump, 
on a one cost weapon that you then need to somehow give go again. And again, if you want to do it in the old way where you're doing like a Blade Runner run through or something like that, focusing on the second swing, well, now you not only need a blue, you need four resources, unless you're swinging for free, which is consuming your gold, right? So I don't, I don't think this ultimate is going to be an ultimate at the same level as Blood on Her Hands, right? And, 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 you know, not necessarily, nor should it, right? Blood on Her Hands was pretty gross, and now we're moving into Classic Constructed, where we have more time to build up. So fair enough, right? Maybe in class, maybe the average in Blitz is two, maybe the average in CC is three in terms of gold tokens, Centauri Soul Swords, whatever. Maybe that's the case. But I think it's going to be very hard, hard to do that, okay? And that brings me to, you know, my next bullet there is the on hits here. Because you have to wager, it becomes very interesting because they get it if you lose. So the incentive for them to block you increases here versus the original Kasai, right? The original Kasai, they're, they're more than willing to take a couple slashes knowing that like, you know, they basically want to keep you in the old, again, with old Kasai, they really wanted to keep you to about three or four copper max, right? Ideally, you keep them at about three, knowing they can still do the thing, but not just win the game, right? In this case, so they would, my point to what I'm saying here is in terms of them blocking they're willing to take a few hits to let you get a little bit, which can then help you get in. In this case, I, I don't know how often you're going to be allowed by your opponent to do this. Now, sure, that means they're blocking, which is great. But, you know, again, I, I, I mentioned, you know, money where your mouth is into Centauri Saber, into something else. And, and sure, maybe if they're blocking a lot, maybe you do have four resources to play with. Fair enough. But I, I don't know, I just question if they're not more incentivized to block as compared to original Kasai. And let me know in the comments, do you, do you think that that will, you know, do you think the wagering will encourage your opponent to do it because maybe they get something out of it? And to be clear, not every hero is going to be able to get something out of a gold token, right? Or whatever token. I mean, most of the other tokens, actually, I, I think they will. But gold specifically is the topic of this because of Kasai. Not everyone's going to be getting something out of gold token. If they've got the nuts, maybe they let you get one. Fair enough. But I don't know. I I, I do question that. Okay. And then, you know, I, I think we kind of already broke this down a little bit already in terms of the, the ultimates, but blood on her hands is just flat out, I believe. Well, I was going to say it's flat out stronger. It's more explosive. How's that? Because of, I mean, if you can, right, if you're comparing copper to gold in this case, right, so compare, like, if you were able to come in with raise an army for six, I don't even know what how you're going to do that, right? Because you have to, but you get my point, right? If you're not looking at one-to-one, -one, like I said, you, you're you looking at reasonably, like, you were reasonably able to pull off a four, a five, or a six blood on your hands very easily, and that was in Blitz. Right, I think even in CC, like we said, you're probably looking at a two to three raise an army, and you have to pay for those. So it's not. I, again, I I don't I don't think they're one to one. I think Blood on Her Hands was just a better card, but you know, raise an army is pretty good in terms of how because they're going to go for those allies. I think right again. Let me know. Do, do you think you go for the allies, knowing that? They have to swing a sword in order to do it and still pay for it. Yeah, that's interesting, right? I mean, sir, there are cases where you may not go for the allies. But they're all, they're all, and, you know, the fact that they're two and it can't just be a Kadachi is very interesting, right? So, you know, it, it, again, I, I do think Blood on Her Hands is a better card, right? I think the OG Kasai strategy probably is better than, you know, the new Kasai. But not, you know, they're, they're, they're different. I mean, obviously they're different, but I, you know, it's not, it's not like night and day. I think one's better. That doesn't mean the other one's bad. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, in conclusion, you know, a lot of people have asked, am I excited? I, you know, I, 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 we've talked about this where your heroes don't pour it over, right? They're not exactly the same. And I think this is a very great example of when your heroes re-released, it's not going to be the same. It will be your hero. 
but it won't necessarily play the same and it won't necessarily speak to you. And I think there's going to be a lot of folks to where Kasai, without her on board, or at least as we know now, without her on board on hits, I think will not speak to many people the same. Actually, when I when I look at the new set, I'm actually very interested in Olympia. It looks like he's going to be a dual swing warrior as well uh, with a couple, you know, three sevens you can put in there to wager stuff, which looks pretty cool. He's got the new React that can pump on wager if you can, you know, put money where your mouth is or whatever into a swing. He looks pretty cool to me, um, but we'll see, right? We'll see. So, Again, let me know down below what you all are thinking. Thanks for tuning in. Again, have a great weekend. Happy, you know, happy Flesh and Blood Friday. Nothing else. Go Commando.